just from the two games that you played on the weekend, do you base a lot of your practice and what you want to work on based on what you saw as far as points of emphasis are concerned today? Yeah, for sure. I, I think every team's probably very similar when, you know, you look at both games and you see what you're not very good at, and then that's what you want to work on in practice. So, um, you know, and then usually that gets better and something else, you know, uh, isn't as good, and that's what you work on next. And that's kind of just the ebbs and flows of, of, uh, of uh, coaching in the NHL. So what were your points of emphasis at practice today, Coach? Well, certainly breakouts for us. Um, you know, we didn't break out very well. Take nothing away from Toronto. They forechecked us uh, and did a good job there. But, um, you know, and new partners, new line mates, there wasn't enough talking. So we just didn't handle the puck enough. So we tried to do a lot of drills today with the puck. Uh, too early to ask about tomorrow night's lineup? Yeah, I'm not uh, 100% on anything yet. Uh, we'll, we'll make that decision. Um, you know, we've played two games essentially in a regular season. It'd be like having two exhibition games. There's nothing set in stone. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll look at it and uh, see what we decide tomorrow morning. Thank you. My name's Cameron, Sportsnet. Yeah, Coach, uh, as well as Matt and Murray uh, played in those first two games, I'm sure you want to get your backup in sooner probably rather than later. Is there a chance that Augsburg could start one of these two games against Winnipeg? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we haven't decided what we're doing. Um, there's nothing set in stone, but, uh, you know, certainly he's going to be a part of it. 56 games in such a short amount of time, he's going to have to play some games. We don't want to wear out uh, Murr right away, but, um, you know, we've kind of got a little bit of a schedule we've looked at, and uh, we'll, we'll follow that. Hi, Wallace, PSN. Hi, DJ. A couple of quick questions. One is uh, you put uh, Good Branson back with Shabbat today, but he seems to be playing pretty well with Zaitsev. What is your thoughts on what you want to do with that pair? Well, I think Shabby plays enough minutes uh, that he's going to play with everyone. And uh, uh, I, I, re I like the pair of 55 and 3. Um, right now, I think they re defend really well um, and they let Mercy the puck. I think Mikey Riley's played his best when he's played with Zaitsev, and that's kind of the thinking right now. But, uh, you know, Shabby and Zaitsev will play together as well, uh, you know, certainly shifts. So there's going to be a little bit mix and match back there. You know, for Shabby to play 25 minutes, he's going to play with everyone. Uh, I'll ask two questions in one. What uh, is there a concern over your face-off numbers right now, and especially playing a Winnipeg team? I think that's fifth in the league in face-offs. And two, what is it that you have Brady Kachuk on the power play face-offs for instead of just, I guess, leaving Josh Norris there? Well, uh, we think Brady's big and strong enough to eventually win draws uh, on a regular basis, and it's a fair question. I mean, Toronto is an elite, uh, you know, got some elite face-off guys with Spezza, Tavares, and Matthews, um, you know, against a younger lineup. And uh, they took it to us in the circle, um, you know, certainly throughout those two games. And then we've got another group of centers, veteran centers, that are coming here in Shifley, Lowry, um, um, Thompson, and Stastny. So it's going to be a battle in there. We're going to have to dig in and find a way to win some faceoffs. So, you know, that's part of playing in a division with a bunch of older teams. You've got guys that are good at it, and we've got to get better. Mike Zeisberger, NHL.com. Yeah, DJ, thanks for doing this. Um, you talked a little bit about what you need to work on, you know, breakouts and such. Um, you had to look at these two games and, and study them. What maybe in the pot with, were the positives or maybe something that a, a player or system-wise that surprised you in a positive vein in those two games? <clears throat> I think we were very good in our own zone. Um, you know, as much as Toronto had the puck a lot, I think after looking at the expected goals against, it was only 1.33. Um, yeah, you know, in in uh, in the grade A chances, we're down. Um, you know, odd man rushes and D zone coverage. So I think we're playing responsible away from the puck, um, but with the puck, there's much to be improved. Al Bukowski, Yeah, I think it's important to just be talking to young guys all the time, just see where their heads are at. You never know. You think, you know, uh, you know something's good and maybe it's not or, or, or it's not and it's good. So I think especially young guys, just see where they're at, you know, what their thoughts are, power play, penalty kill, you know, how they like their line mates, how, you know, just, just general talk, just kind of check in and see how they're doing really is, is all I'm talking to them about, not even particularly hockey sometimes. Mark Broussard as well. Hey, DJ, uh... You had uh, Josh Brown in junior hockey. Is he 
much a much different player than, than he was back then, or he just brings what you expected uh, since he's gotten here? He's exactly the same as he was then. He blocks shots, plays tough, boxes out. He's really competitive. Um, his skating has, has improved, obviously, to allow him to play in the National Hockey League. I think there was a shift on the penalty kill where Matthews was coming full speed, and he, you know, managed to beat him to the post and made Matthews go around. You know, in junior, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, so, obviously, he's worked on it, um, and he's a really good defender. Uh, he's big, he's strong, and he's going to be a guy that uh, is going to help us get better here.